Good morning. Hello. Is anyone there? It is nine o'clock straight up. This is Pastor Dory Smith, and I am checking in with you this morning. It is Saturday session with Dory. Good morning, Jonathan. Hi, Jennifer. I am happy to be with you on this Saturday morning, and we are going to wait just a couple of minutes to see who else is going to join us. Hi, Patty. You and I were talking earlier this morning, and I am so happy that you have decided to join me this morning. Hi, Jung. I should have known you would be on here with me. You've already told me that you're gonna be sharing this on your page so that all of the many peeps that are um, attached to you will be able to watch it also. Hi, Anna. Good to see you this morning. Lori Boys, good to see you. Man, I haven't seen you in so long. We need to do sushi together. Ashley, good morning. This is such a privilege and a pleasure for me to be with you this morning. Um, this is kind of a new experience for me. Those of you who know me well know that I can be a little um, uh, electronically challenged at times, um, but we're gonna give this a go. Um, and we're gonna be just fine. Oh, my sissy is on here with me. Mwah! Good morning, Beth. And Nancy, good to see you this morning. Denise, oh, I saw you just a couple of weeks ago and it's always good to see you. Mary, I love you and I miss you. Um, folks, it is, it is, again, it is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. And when Pastor Ken, asked me to do this on Saturday morning. I was really, really blessed uh, to be able in, to come together with you and, and do this. Um, I have my mug with me and I want you to be able to uh, see it because this is exactly what all of us need to be doing right now. Can you see it? It says, keep calm and carry on. Um, yeah, right now in the midst of all the craziness, this is what all of us need to be doing, keeping calm. Good morning, Mary Lynn. Good to see you this morning. Hi, Nova and Lisa Frazier. Good to see you. Um, I want to tell you that already this morning, I've had a mini, oh, that's M-I-N-I. I've had a mini um, counseling session already in my front yard. Uh, I was out walking my dogs this morning, and one of my neighbors was walking down the street. Yes, we did have um, the correct amount of social distancing, but he was walking down the street, and I, I did my uh, courtesy, hi, how are you? And he said, well, um, I'm, I'm really uh, not doing very well. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Are things not, not going well at your house? And he said, well, Dory, um, things are, are kind of chippy at my house. And I wasn't really sure what that meant. So um, being the inquisitive type, I said, um, what does that mean, chippy? And he said, well, you know, it's like when, when our girls, um, played soccer when they were little. Um, good morning, Gail. Good to see you and Sharon. He said, when our girls played sh soccer when they were little, um, you know, one group um, who had on one color costume, and I'm going to give him some grace because he's a stockbroker, okay? Um, one, one group of girls had on one color costume, and the other group of girls had on another color costume. And then the, the ladies with the black socks who had on uh, the whistles, they would start throwing flags and blowing the whistles. And then the girls would start crying. And then the parents would start yelling. And then my wife would turn to me and she would say, oh, things are starting to get really chippy. He said, well, Dory, my house is starting to get really chippy 
right now. So I'm just curious, how's your house doing with the isolation and the quarantine right now? Let me know on the, on the thread, is your house getting chippy these days? Hi, Donna. Gail, good to see you. Kelly Limehouse, hi, good to see you. And Tammy, mwah. Is your house getting chippy these days? How is the isolation and the quarantine working out for your family? Is, are you having too much like close family time? How's it working? I'm just curious. Let me hear from you. Are things starting to get kind of, um, are we getting too close to one another? Are things, is there a lot of angst and anxiety? Are we getting kind of snippy? Are we getting kind of under each other's skin? Let me hear from you. I wanna know what it is that is happening in your house, you know, behind closed doors when nobody is watching. Hmm. Yeah, Tammy, schedules are off. Yeah, yeah. See, nothing, nothing is normal right now. Everything that has been is no longer. And so that brings me to the question of, do you ever wonder why it is in scripture that we are told to count it all joy when we face various trials and tribulations in our life? Do you find it odd that we are told to find joy and that that is an odd response when hardship and suffering is part of our new normal right now. Gail says we're, we're being comfortable and a little lazy and catching up on some reading and movies. Yeah, I'm hearing that a lot. But, but yes, we're told in, in scripture that we're to find joy amidst suffering and hardship. You know, this past week is, is the first week that I have actually seen clients virtually, which is a little um, different for me, a lot different for me, because I'm a very touchy-feely person. Um, but I've seen all of my clients either on Zoom or FaceTime or on the telephone. Um, so that's been kind of wonky for me to, to get used to that um, virtual um, interaction with people rather than one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you've been working from home, you've probably been having to go through some same interaction. Let me hear from you with regard to that. Um, you know, and it's very, very different what we're going through. But as I'm talking with my clients, I'm hearing a lot of the same issues coming up that as they're going through the longer days of the isolation and the quarantine, whether it's by themselves or whether it's with, you know, a lot of family members in their house, you know, they're, the common threads that I'm hearing is that they're dealing with, you know, angst and depression and anxiety and worry and fear and a lot of these same issues that are creeping up. So again, we're talking about how do we find joy amidst all of that? So I wanna submit to you today that trials like the one that we're all in right now 
can, in fact, be a boot camp of blessings if we allow God to have his way. So I'm going to share with you a few ways that God can bless us in the midst of this coronavirus crisis that we're in. And the first way, because this is one of the biggest things that I'm hearing people dealing with, and that is the issue of fear. Hi, Andrea, good to see you. Let me just catch up with a couple of people here. Elmer, hi, Lisa, Mwah. you're beautiful, darling. Yes, Nova trials, as I said, can be a boot camp of blessings if we allow God to use it. So this issue of fear, I'm hearing that a lot from people. So this blessing, this first blessing that I want to talk with you about is the blessing of faith over fear. Fear is probably the number one issue that looms large in this global pandemic. I want to share with you something that I heard a pastor say that I found very profound. So tattoo this on the inside of your head. Check the news. Don't watch the news. Let me say that again to make sure you got it. Check the news. Don't watch the news. Because gloom and doom coverage permeates the airwaves right now. And you know what I'm talking about. This virus has forced us to face uncertainty at every turn. And the truth is that we all know people that we love who are very vulnerable to this virus. You know, I for one, you know, my mom is almost 89 years old and, and lives with us. She has asthma. She, you know, just by her age alone, she has chronic lung issues. And, you know, so my mom um, and many people that you know, you know, these people are very susceptible to this coronavirus. And that is very scary. So if you're an elderly person, or if you have an underlying health condition, this illness can certainly induce anxiety and sometimes even panic if we let it. And then there's the issue that this crisis isn't just attacking our health. It's also in many people attacking our livelihood. You know, I have a number of clients who are already displaced from their jobs. They're either already had their hours cut at work or they have already been let go from their jobs or, or been told to go home and we'll bring you back when all of this craziness is over. Some of them have had reduced pay and then some of them have been sent home with no pay for the time being. And they're scared. They don't know what they're gonna do. And my phone and my text messages are blowing up and it hurts my heart for them. 
and I'm on my knees a lot for these people. Because again, the anxiety and the panic is running rampant right now because it's attacking the livelihood of people. The stock market is in a free fall. Portfolios have crashed. Now that doesn't affect me personally, good, bad, or indifferent, but it does a lot of people. Large corporations are having to restructure to weather this storm while small businesses, like I have a very dear friend who, who owns a restaurant here in Lexington and they're battling as a lot of restaurants are. I've got a, a client that I saw the other day and bless her sweet angel heart. She said, Dory, I am trying to do takeout at the local restaurants at least once a week because I'm trying to do the best I can to try and help these people stay afloat. Because people are hurting and they're trying to do the best they can in the midst of this crisis. And I know you understand what I'm talking about. Hundreds of thousands of stable workers who had jobs just a week ago are on furlough right now until the foreseeable future. Hospitals and healthcare professionals are bracing right now for what could be a tsunami, if you will, of need. And it's scary. Life as we have known it is not our life right now. And I'm here to tell you that all of this uncertainty, listen carefully as I lean into you, all of this uncertainty is designed by the enemy to induce one thing. And what do you guess that is? Fear. Fear is designed by the enemy. Fear is not of God. Amen? Let me hear some amens out there. Come on. Scripture tells us that fear is not of God. 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us clearly that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And in fact, we seek God and he has promised us to deliver us from our fears. And this is what we have to hang on to right now, folks, to get us over, to get us over this issue of fear. So be reminded, keep calm and carry on. Right, Jackie Geddes? Right, Robin? Right, Pastor Richard? As Leslie is saying, we are not afraid of coronavirus. Danny is correct. Fear is a liar. Hi, Bailey. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so glad to see you. So this first blessing that God brings us is the blessing of faith over fear. Okay? Psalm 34, 4. 
is going to say to us, make note of this, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So people that know me well know that one of my absolute favorite words is the word choice. We have a choice to make right now. We have a choice to make in this crisis. We have a choice as to whether we will choose faith or fear. If we choose fear, as one of my clients says to me very often, Dory, learn me something. So right now, I am going to learn you one of the most dangerous things that can happen in the midst of this quarantine. If you choose this mostly traveled road called fear, if you choose the road of fear and that fear lodges itself into your core and it just sits there unnoticed, unmoving, and it just hunkers down with you while you are quarantined with your family and things just begin to lay on top of it, one after the other. Somebody's chewing their popcorn too loud. Somebody's leaving cabinet doors open. Somebody's not cleaning up their toys. Somebody is doing something. Just one irritation after the other, after the other, after the other. Sooner or later, something very benign is going to happen. And that proverbial cork is going to come off of that champagne bottle. And what started out as a fear in you is going to blow. And that cork is going to come off that champagne bottle. And it is going to manifest itself into such a tremendous amount of anger. The roof is going to come off your house. Because you see, this thing that I'm learning you is that anger, friends, is a secondary emotion. We do not come into this world angry. Anger is fed primarily by two primary emotions. They are primarily either fit. Anger is primarily fed by either fear or pain. And that pain can either be physical pain, or it can also be emotional or mental pain, all of which you also might be, you know, um, having during this period of quarantine and isolation. Be very mindful of this because Satan is going to use all of this. But if you just squash all of this fear down by choosing that road, eventually, the evil one is going to use it and it is going to just blow. So choosing that road of fear is a very, very dangerous road to choose. But choosing this road of faith, oh, the road less traveled is always a better choice. So how do we choose faith? Oh, that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. We start by seeking the Lord. We submit every fear that we have. We face that fear one by one concerning this crisis or anything for that matter. 
and we submit it to him, him being the Lord. We get on our knees. We name that fear one by one. And we say to him, Father, I give this fear to you. And then we know, we know that God is committed to delivering us from it. We hand it over to him. And we know that he's got it. As a very dear friend of mine, say, we say to each other, back and forth all the time, just these two words, but God, but God. What that means is he's got it. He's got it. So again, this first blessing he gives us is choosing faith over fear. The second blessing is the blessing of releasing control. You know, when life is running smoothly, we're tempted to think that we are all masters of our destiny. Hi, Amy. So good to see you on here this morning. You've probably got all of those children watching, watching a movie somewhere. We think we're all masters of our destiny when things are going just, you know, peachy keen. But when chaos, like a pandemic, comes along, that veil is stripped from our eyes and suddenly we see what was there all along and we realize that we are in control of, oh, that's right, nothing. Yeah, not even a little bit. And that can be somewhat frightening until we realize who is in control. God. He's in control of your health, your finances, your world. You see, when fear looms large, recognize that you've placed your trust in the wrong source. The government, your health, your bank account, your job, those aren't bad things necessarily, but putting your trust in those things they are gonna fail you every single time. God won't fail you. The Apostle Paul, who let's face it, suffered imprisonment, beatings, snake bites, shipwrecks, he told us in 2 Corinthians 1.10, and I'm reading from the uh, NIV, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. The Apostle Paul encourages us to make this declaration. He has, he will, he will continue. 
Folks, I encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to affirm that God is in control. He has delivered us in the past. He will deliver us now. And he will continue to deliver us in the future. And friends, when we, and I use that we word on purpose, when we receive that promise into our spirits, we will receive such a freedom and we will shed off such a enormous amount of angst and anxiety and depression and a lot of other just junk that many of us deal with. You know what? I'm going to ask you to, tr to just test me on that. So that's the blessing of releasing control. Now I want to tell you about the blessing of simplicity. To stay safe and to stop the spread of COVID-19, we must slow down the pace of our life. You see, many of us don't have the choice about this directive. And unless you work in government or the media or healthcare or a few other um, essential directives, your life right now is simplifying. I love you too, Macy. Many industries right now have come to a screeching, screeching halt right now. Church gatherings have canceled, which is one of the reasons why the harvest has pulled out all of the stops to uh, get creative, to make sure that we are staying connected as much as possible to people and doing things like we're doing every morning with, with you. Schools are canceled. Extracurricular activities are canceled. Life as we know it is canceled. This virus has forced many of us to do what we won't do on our own, what we can't do ordinarily. It's forced us to slow down. It has forced us to do things differently. You know, I had a client say to me a couple of days ago, and I'm going to tell you verbatim what they said. And maybe this will resonate with some of you. They said, My kids are freaking out about not seeing their friends. But I've decided to embrace this simple season. We're going to catch up on lingering projects. We're going to spring clean early. We're going to connect with each other more often. We're going to eat meals together regularly. Friends, I would like to offer you a challenge right now. You know, many of us already read our PGP every day. 
I would like to ask you if you would elongate that and maybe read more of your Bible daily. Or hey, as we're sitting in my office, you know, I have an entire room full of books. If you need something to read, reach out to me. I'll be glad to make recommendations for you on something you can read. So one of the challenges is to just read more. Get away from your TV. I would encourage you and challenge you to rest more. I would encourage you to play more. And I would encourage you to pray more. As God tells us, be still and know that I am God. Amen. I think that he is calling on each of us to maybe get closer to him during this time. If the, cor if the coronavirus has drastically altered your schedule from a breakneck frenzy to a snail's pace right now, embrace the change. You probably need it. So friends, do you ever wonder why it is that scripture tells us to count it as joy when we face various trials and tribulations in our life? Because joy is such an odd response to hardship and suffering. And don't get me wrong, I know that I know people are suffering out there. I know they are. And I'm, I'm praying for all the suffering that's out there. But viewed through the right lens, the coronavirus crisis can be a conduit of blessings to you and through you to others. I'm going to ask you not to miss these opportunities to grow and allow God's blessings to flow through you. I would like to end our time today with a very simple hymn that I learned as a child growing up at Holland Avenue Baptist Church in West Columbia. And if you know it, how about sing along with me? It's simply titled The Doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God gives us the blessings of faith over fear, the blessings of releasing control, and the blessings of simplicity. Don't miss these blessings today. Thank you for sharing your Saturday morning with me. 
I look forward to seeing you next Saturday morning. And until then, remember, always, always hold on to hope. Until then, have a great day.